anyone but as a manager that is my experience I manage these guys properly you know don't put them into some that I took a lot of risky fights in my career but that's me you know so I have to learn from my mistake and move these guys along properly you know what's it like being on the other side I don't like it I want to fight I come here and say yeah I'm gonna enjoy it and now I'm like what shows in there man that's just I just got extreme to find a late, uh, late opponent for you. Who? Adam Booth. Oh. Adam Booth. He can yeah. put some weights in his pocket. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Nah. Yeah. No, um, no, no, no. I need, I need time to get myself ready. I should be fighting in about 12 weeks' time. So, yeah. Let's see what I'm on. Any potential opponents? Brazil, Pavetkin, Luis Ortiz. Like I said, I'm the can man. Whoever won it can get it. Out of the three of them that you mentioned, who would you, is there anyone that you prefer? Brazil, because he's a WBC mandatory. And I think if we can get WBC to agree that if I beat him, then while uh, the winner of Wilder Fury have to fight my next with no intervening fights. If they will agree that, we'll see. But let's see what happens, you know. It's the boxing business. And money and promoters and managers can pull the strings. So let's see. tricky opponent which a lot of people have had problems with in the past people with names that are mentioned just ahead of mine or next to mine so it's a bit of a statement so yeah it's good though good night time. How, how did you feel going in there good yeah I felt good it was nice to it was nice to have opponent it almost was a bit not a shock but it was almost a bit like ah oh, cool we've got a game here like we've got we've got a fight on our hands because he came out he was throwing some big shots he was pumping the jab in my face and things so yeah, it was definitely good to good to have that. It was nice to feel that in the ring, especially under the lights. First time, not first time obviously at the O2, but definitely at this level where it's, there's a few thousand people in there and things. So yeah, it's, it was a really good event all the way through and he was a nice opponent to have. So going forward, mm. um, I know Dylan said that he'll be out in April. Yeah. Obviously you should be on that card. I hope so, yeah, I'll push to be. What kind of opponent would you say that you would personally like? Um, I would say one similar to this one, but obviously someone who's gonna with a similar record, with a similar stature and build, and someone that's gonna just bring a fight to me, someone that's gonna bring me something to show off on a on a big event like that. Because whenever deal fights, it's always a massive event. So someone to in front of a lot of people showcase my skills. Like this is 
getting rid of people in the first round is great, but at the same time, I don't get to work on my craft and I don't get to show all these people like what I can actually do. I can, I've, I've got heavy hands. I can take people out when I need to. I can find gaps, but there's loads, so much more I can do. So. There's a lot more to show people, so I'm just looking for the right kind of dance partner to kind of do all that with. Are you looking in good shape, mate? Always, always. Look at the guns on him. <laughs> where's, we got, where's, where's the coach? Where's, where's coach? Where's the coach? We're not in good shape. We're not in good shape. How, how, how did he do? I think he done good. Um, people forget that guy. We, we saw him in the way, and he come in a stone heavier than when he fought Nathan Gorham and Alex Dickinson, and he looked a bit cut. We thought, you know, he could come in a bit. We knew he weren't going to be fast. But, you know, he surprised us a bit with his jab today. His jab was called Fab a couple of times, but after Fab worked him out, it was happy days from then. It's just a whole experience as well. Yeah, yeah, the people there and yeah. a lot of big crowds. I think, you know, when he relaxes, what Fab does, he takes a few rounds mm. to warm up, but we can't do that in the heavyweight game. We have to mm. be warm up from the start because with a bigger puncher, it could be, you know, we don't want to learn the hard way. So from a coaching perspective, obviously you still see loads yeah, for him to improve those on. To do, you know, like if those hands are going to be down, those feet can't be stiff, you know, like stiff foot. You know. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's a bit of a stiff foot. Right, so, you know, if he's loose, I call him Chris like, Brown. You don't call him <laughs> uh, stiff foot. <laughs> he looks like he looks like Lawrence Fishburne, doesn't he? <laughs> Matrix, yeah, but if he just... Is, we, know, he's, he's, we know, don't we, that he loosened up, didn't he? The further yeah, he goes, the yeah. more he loosened up and the more we play the game, didn't he? Yeah, he had a good warm-up and he was in there, he just he was training jabs. The guy was tall because he looked smaller than Fab, but people forget he was 6'4 himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's very tall as well, but... You know, we can sit there and find faults and that as well, but he still put him away quicker than Gorham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alex Dickinson, who I think is higher ranked than Fabio, couldn't uh, only beat him on points. So, you know, all these people that Fabio's fighting and... We have the little, we're always going to be critical because we want to be the best because we see what he can do in the gym. So we want what he does in the gym, in the ring, and when you see that, then it's going to be a different story. So do you class this as a big statement to where he's at? Uh, yeah, I think it is. You know, like if people watching, they're thinking, you know, like, he hit him with a shot, you know, and it took Nathan, I think it was the first clean shot. Nathan Gorham, who's 18 and a half stone, hit him with a load of shots to, to make to finish him off, you know. So I think it is a big statement, but obviously we want to... We want Fabio to show what he can do in the gym. So the next 12 months, I think I answered that last yeah. week, but after this fight, so we've seen where he's at now, where, where personally would you like to take him as his coaching team? Do you want to answer this one? Because I'm doing a lot of talking. No, 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 yeah. well, we just want to, we want, to, we want to build him slowly, don't we? We want to build him slowly. Dylan's we've got, in no we've got, right, Adrian, yeah. we've got Adrian on side, don't we? And yeah. we want to build him slowly. Yeah, you know, like, properly. Dylan, Dylan knows he's learning. Remember, as we know, he hasn't, he hasn't got an amateur background, so we're doing on-the-job training, but we're learning well. And I think, you know, by the end of the year, you know, I even think, I know it's going to be a big, bold statement, he can skip the southern area and go for the English I do by agree. the end of the year, because, you know, in the southern area, you know, it's, he's, the people that fought for the southern area, and we're starting to get higher rank now. Yeah. You know, I think we're 13th in Britain, if I'm correct, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. so, you know, obviously, we're happy to take it slow, but whoever's got the titles, you know, we'll be ready. So it's a big year. Yeah, hopefully, you know, it's good to be on the team with Dylan. Dylan, we wouldn't have this opportunity if it wasn't for Dylan and the team. How was it, Dill? <laughs> it was good, man. The guys done well. Fabio won in spectacular fashion. And Craig, Craig's on the farm. He's a trip to the heavyweight division, man. I said to them, man, Craig's got a dangerous right hand. He's sharp. I've seen it. You know, I felt it many times before. You like respect, Frank. Bless you. Nice one, Frank. He's got a very good right hand, sharp. Throw it with menace, you know, and uh, that's it. You got the job done, man. And Fabio with a first round knockout. Yeah, um, Fabio, listen. All of it, Fabio needs to keep his hands up. You know, he's young, he's fast, he got power, but as he goes up in level, these guys going to be trying to take his head off, man. He's to keep his hands up before he get dropped, you know. Uh, you know, he just needs to be careful. But he, he's young and he will learn, you know what I mean. And he's doing great. You can't, you can't fault him, you know what I mean. He got the win by knockout. That's what they love. So yeah. So, what's next for Fabio? What do you, what, what's next for Fabio? He's got loads of options, loads of dates. We're just going to wait and see now what's going on, you know? So wait and see what's going on. He might be in my undercard, he might be up before then. You know, so let's see. So do you think that sends out a signal as well to the heavyweight division? It's a knockout, that isn't it? That guy he thought was good. I don't really think it's a signal. It is what people are just understanding that he's there and he's coming. It's not really a signal. When he starts sending signals, when he starts knocking out top 10 guys, uh, guys for British title and stuff like that, but you know, but people know his name is in the, his name is now in their head. He's in the mix. Yeah. 
you know. Probably a word lay. No, guarantee the next guy fights and they get knock out. Yeah? Yeah. Inside you, 10 rounds. You did mention um, Dominic whoever Brazil. Is, whoever won it can have it. They're going to get knocked out. That's right. So can we say what happened with the AJ? Why it didn't go forward? AJ's a pussy. <laughs> you heard it there first. <laughs> AJ don't want no smoke. 